It's a great morning here, day 14 of the fast. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. I felt this thinking, Father, thank you for your provisions. I am a son of God. I am a king. I am a priest unto you. I am a Lord. I am a God, junior unto you, according to scripture. A little lower than God, you made me after your own image and likeness, according to Genesis 126. And Lord, I remind you, and because you like to remind you, and we want, we like to remind you. I do. Isaiah 45, 11 is commanding me of the works of my hands. Concerning me, you command the works of my hands. And the model prayer for financial, supernatural release and increase is Satan, take your hands off my money and resources and everything that's mine right now in the name of Jesus, to which every knee has to bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And right now, you take your hands off our things, every single thing that's mine, land, property, cash, vehicles, buildings, people, situations, equipments, things to do and get done. Everything on the earth. For the cattle on a thousand hills is God's and everything is the Lord's and the earth and the fullness thereof and all they that dwell therein are his. So they're ours, mine, by access. And you cannot block any of it. Take your hands off of them all in Jesus name now father God we thank you for the victory in this that you're bringing about for me and for your chosen elect your good sons and daughters who are walking in righteousness and Satan in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth you're bound broken defeated and you can't hold and on you cannot hold on to anything or hinder anything that's ours ever again another day or hour in our life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth it is done the blood of Jesus is over against all of you the word of God is against all of you and we enforce it right now this is the victory we have through our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we cast on away our confidence, Hebrews 10, 35 and 38. Well, we walk by faith. And Paul said, we walk by faith, not by sight. And with a head and not the tail above, only not beneath, according to less than everything we do, according to Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14. And Father, right now, Father God, Almighty Jehovah, for how good you are, how wonderful you are in all the earth and all the universe and here on earth where is now the place of our assignment, even our heavenly assignment. It's a heavenly si assignment on earth. And Jesus, you said, Father, you're holy, you're hallowed, your name is above all. And you want us to have on earth as it is in heaven. And we're to command it so. This is the model prayer. So I do that right now. As is the pattern of heaven of wealth, luxury, splendor, for his opulence. While others are saying religious, silly, silly things like, oh, the prosperity uh, is this or that, but you know, it's something else. Or why do people have to do that? You know, it's a deception because you're supposed to walk in prosperity. And the more you do, the more you can do. The more you do, the more you can do. But I know that anyway. So all these religious quips that people quote, we're not to listen to them. The scripture says we're to have everything, the cattle on a thousand hills and the thousand hills thereon, to have dominion over everything on the earth, everything fowl of the air, thing that walks on the earth, creeps on the earth, every living thing, every inanimate object, 
the wealth, the substance, the land, the minerals, the gold, the diamonds, the property, business, commodities, brilliance of creative wisdom. One thing the Holy Spirit does, Lord, one thing you do, blessed, precious, mighty, glorious, Holy Ghost, uh, you are awesome. In this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place. Abba Father, Son of God, our elder brother, King of kings and Lord of lords. The reason the word brother is being used, it's not like, a colloquial term, but it means connection in the family because we're sons. And Jesus, you said in John 15, we, I no longer call you servants, I call you my friend. Because a friend shares with his friends uh, things that he's received, brilliance, blessing, power, wisdom, riches, strength, blessing, glory, and honor. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and all of the attributes of the Holy Ghost is creative brilliance. And therefore, we have it because he said he shares it with his friends. And I am his friend. How about you? Are you his friend? then he'll share those things with you. So you're not a servant. A servant is just one who works for and can't even know. Well, Jesus even said in another further modern English translation that scripture in John 15 is really great. It says, for a servant doesn't partake of the family business. A servant doesn't get involved, is not brought into and involved in the family business or the affairs of the business. But my friends are, my sons are, my fellow family members are. You see that? And this is an identity we need to take on and know about more. That we're to be blessed, we're to be rich, we're to be prosperous, we're to be healthy, we're to be wonderfully arrayed, wonderfully cared for. Like a baby comes into the world, does he get the bill for the hospital? Do they say, hey, go get yourself some clothes, kid? Do they say, uh, you got to buy all your supplies, you know, your car seat, your stroller, <laughs> your um, food, your house. No, the kid doesn't know anything. The baby's innocent. So we have a father, El Shaddai. He's more than enough. He's even too much. He has too much for us to even handle. Malachi 3, 10 to 12 said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. For what? That there'll be meat in my house. The meat of revelation flowing in the priesthood. So whoever's the priest, whoever's the prophet, whoever's the anointed vessel, they receive the tithe. And us, even as those leaders, we also tithe to other leaders on higher planes and plateaus and realms of success and fruitfulness than us. We relate to them, and then it all flows down the pipeline. Our tithe is never to be for a need that someone else has. It has to go to the priest, a high, a high priest on the earth, who could be a great apostle, prophet, you know, somebody great, somebody walking in wisdom and power, the anointing. Then we partake of that grace. So God said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. Can you imagine that? You don't have room enough to receive it. That's an overflowing blessing. Remember Moses said, Lord, please, your blessing is too much. Can you, can you slow down a minute? We don't know where to put everything. Who has had that problem? I haven't met anybody that has, but we need to push ourselves toward that level. Some people are walking in abundance, they say. I know some men of God that are so blessed. They would tell you, I have so many cars, so much house, so much in the ministry, so much building, so many projects, so many things happening. I'm like up to my, above the top of my head swimming in this thing. But 
few are in that realm, but there are the few, and I look at them every day. As I said, officially, those are the people that I listen to, and the others I don't want to listen to, because I don't have time and space to put anything in me that's not total victory, total success, total wealth, total treasure, total opulence, total brilliance, total productivity and fruitfulness and results of blessings and movement of advancing the kingdom. Souls being won, outreaches, come on, ministry going the whole world over. How can we possibly do that if we're not connected with a source that's doing it? It's hard at best, at least, it's, at very least, it's very hard. But Jesus said, what, my yoke is easy and my burden's light. Now I want to add something here that I'm just seeing by the Spirit right now. His yoke is easy, his burden's light, because maybe it is uh, said like that too, because he expects us to connect with his grace. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father in heaven. We see him in the Spirit, I do. We, we hear his voice, you know, the Holy Spirit is upon us. He talks to us all, he talks to me all the time. Every single day he tells me something great and great things, speaks through me, revelation, ideas. But how am I going to get everything done unless I tap a source of people that are the idea bearers, the solution bearers? Even people in the world, in certain realms, they have it because the churches, the church folks are not on there showing these things. Like someone could show their great things they've achieved, how much money they've made, certain levels of high luxury, and that's a real popular thing on the social media these days. But when you watch a video that's made and somebody shows you, here's my cars, here's my office, here's my jet, here's my what I'm going, here's what I'm the highest realm of living, they show it. And you can watch it on a big screen TV. Now you can feed your mind and get ideas. See, some people in the church are totally, have been deceived by the devil to be against this. I'm not. In fact, I'm 100 trillion percent for it. Because anything like that that I need to use for my own life, but besides, we only live once. It's appointed unto man once to leave and then, the ju then you're judged. That's scary. And I'm not ready. You know, if the, I say this a lot. If the rapture comes, hey, I'm going. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Revelation 21. There's a blessing for those who love his appearing. And if you love his appearing, when he comes, you're going to go up with him. That's wonderful. If it's today, great. No argument. But I would still, feel, I, said, I say this, I would feel very disappointed. I don't want to go yet. Now, I'm not going to be here for the Great Tribulation because we're going to be caught up before that happens. That's the night when no man can work, that Jesus said, work while there's day. It's still daylight. We still have time. I believe we have 20 years anyway. That's my jurisdiction and assignment is 20 years. That's what I heard God say. So I believe. But could he come before that? He's welcome to. Do I want to go when he comes? Absolutely. I'm not staying a second more. Because then it's going to be crazy on the earth. The judgment's going to hit the earth. And I'm not, I'm not the wicked. I'm not supposed to be judged. I'm not the wicked. So there's grace now. It's still daylight. Now, two scriptures. That's one. Work while there's day, for the night will come when no man can work anymore. That's the time of the catching away of the church. Obviously, if you just put two, to, two and two together in your astute mind, if you think astutely, brilliantly, which I pray that everybody would because I don't see that everybody does, but I pray that you'll go further in that right now and become more successful in your thinking and your imagination. And just did, you know, put two and two together. God does expect us to think. That's why he gave us our minds, you know. And uh, the night comes when no man can work. So if you're not going to be able to work anymore, now there's going to be a witness of people left behind. They're going to go through all that. I, okay, that's for them, but it's not for me. But that day is not here yet. So that's one scripture. Night comes when no man can work. It didn't happen. It hasn't happened yet. It will happen in the future, but it hasn't happened yet. It's still day. Work while it's day, Jesus said. It's still daytime. For the night comes when no one can work. But now it's still daytime. We can still work. And then he said, occupy until I come. 
do business until I come aggressively. We're doing that. And then he said, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. So pray that the Lord of the harvest sends laborers out into the harvest field. We are laborers. Now that's there. Now that's four scriptures or so. There's another one, great one, Matthew 24. It says, when you see these signs coming on the earth as the signs of craziness, of evil that we're seeing in our day now, the last days we're in for sure, because Israel was born as a nation in 1948. That was one major sign before the end, and that was 70 some odd years ago. 48, yeah. 58, 68, 78, 88, 98, 2008, 2018, that's 70, and then 5. 75 years ago, my friends, Israel was born as a nation, came back together, established as a nation called Israel, not Palestine, Israel, it's Israel's land. It's the land of the Jews, of the Israelites, the Hebrews. So the other people can have their own, build their own somewhere, but not on the land that God gave them. Say a big amen. That's another whole, that's another whole scenario, isn't it? So the Lord is wanting us to take dominion. And we have to do it. So to continue in the prayer, is devil, Satan, take your hands off my resources in Jesus' name. His hands are released and broken off of everything. They're released and broken off of everything that's mine. Now, right now, in this day and hour, right now, today. In Jesus' name. So be it. Say amen for yourself. I'm saying amen for me. Because we say amen together. We agree together. Matthew 18, 19. If two, two of you agree touching anything in prayer together, it'll be done for you for them, for us. So be it in Jesus' name. Now, to continue in the prayer, the next part is, Father God, in Jesus' name, send your ministering spirits, your angels, to cause the money and the resources to come into my hands now, right now, in Jesus' name. Right now. They're coming to me now. So the prayer is, devil, take your hands off my things. In the name of Jesus, and Lord, Father, God, Almighty God, Jehovah, Great Almighty One, Ruler of the Universe, King of Kings, the Boss, Great Jehovah, Father God, and by the power of the blessed, powerful, most glorious Holy Spirit, who is on the earth with us. No mantle ever left the earth. When men died, William Branham, Catherine Kuhlman, John G. Lake, Smith Wigglesworth, people that carry great anointings on them. Amy Simple McPherson, Maria Woodworth, Ed Edder, Charles G. Finney. Uh, think about all the great ones that have gone before. John Wesley, you know, the Jeffries brothers. Reinhardt Bonnke picked up the mantle of uh, George Jeffries. I've had impartations of anointings coming to me, and I feel really bad that more, more, you know, there's been so much warfare over these things. I just... But God is still, he's always moving, but it's got to come into a greater realm right now. So, Father, all the more that those that offended us are cursed with like a millstone around their neck to be thrown into the sea. But we totally forgive them and absolve ourselves from any connection with them. In fact, we forget about it as if it never happened. We must do that for ourselves. And a, and a great apostle friend in America was just dealing with this uh, yesterday in his message. And I, call, I turned in, tuned into it uh, late, uh, in the, early in the morning, late night, early morning uh, when he was sharing that in a night service. And he was talking about forgiving everybody, no matter how bad it is what they did releasing yourself as if it never happened, forgetting about it, getting it off your book, so to speak, getting it off your mind, getting it out of your heart completely. We must do that for ourselves. However, and we do, we do, and we do it again. Every time we hear a thought like that, I get reminded we do it again. Like, Lord, I, I, I'm done with that. That's, 
I don't care. You know, it's important to do that because you can't go f- very fast forward when you're looking backward. You can't go fast forward through the looking through the windscreen or the windshield, driving fast on the road, while you're looking in the rearview mirror. You have to look one place or the other. You're looking back or you're looking forward. So we need to either be operating in, well, we, we, we are operating in either the replay or the preplay. <laughs> the preview or the review. Araba shakalaba, that's powerful. That's powerful. That is powerful. You see it? Looking back or looking forward? Thinking about the past or thinking about the future? Thinking about the past or thinking about the future? Huh. You have to look forward, not backward. Forget about all things that happened before. Paul said, I, in, I think it's in Philippians 3.13, somewhere like that. I have to look it up again. The exact address of it, of that verse, what the chapter and verse number is of the book. He said, I don't count myself to yet have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Uh, in other words, I go toward the higher road, not the lower road, and I forget those things that are behind. Isaiah 43, 18, 19, and 20 reference that, or, or you know, compare with that. Was, they said it before, before time, thousands of years ago. Up to 3,000 years ago, thereabout, the prophet Isaiah was walking the earth, and God's anointing was so heavily upon him, and he upon him and spoke through him. Oh, my God, spoke to him to share things with the human race, even down to our generation now. So powerful, the prophet Isaiah. Oh, my God, what a prophet. God said through him, Remember not the former things, consider not the things of old, Isaiah 43, 18. Verse 19, for behold, I'm going to do a new thing. Shall it not now spring forth? Um, verse 20 said, I'll make rivers to run in the desert. In other words, water of the glory, even in, the, even in dry places. I'll cause rivers of blessings to flow for you for me and for you well for you says the Lord the Lord is speaking here Isaiah 48 17 I'm the Lord your God will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous Proverbs 13 22 the blessing of the Lord makes rich and has no sorrow Proverbs 10 22 Deuteronomy 8 18 I'm the Lord your God who gives you power to get wealth Isaiah 45, 2 and 3, treasures of all kinds of places, known and unknown, hidden, even from dark treasures and places in the earth. I'll give you those things. Now we receive them, Lord. They're coming into our hands now because they're in the works. They've been in the works. They're ours. They're coming into our hands right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And he said, by this you'll know that I'm your God, who even calls you by your own name, summons you by your name. You say, Thomas, come here. Thomas Smith and the fourth, come. I have this blessing for you. It's happening today in Jesus' name. Everything that's ours is coming to, to us. Everything that's mine is coming to me right now. Everything that's mine is coming to me right now. Say it. Say it with me. Say, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father God, in Jesus' name. Everything that's mine is coming to me right now. Say this. Devil, Satan, evil spirits, demons, take your hands off my things now in Jesus' name. Get away from them. Get off the people that are there. And then Malachi 3.10 again, the 12 says, I'll, God said, I will rebuke the devourer when you're tithing. You need to be a tither. One of the blessings is he'll, he'll give you so much and you'll be a delightsome land for him. The blessing will come upon you in so many ways. No curse will be operating in your financial world or your life. You'll be operating in the blessing. Say amen. When you're a tither. And then uh, he said, um, he said, uh, I'll rebuke the devourer. So any of the devouring business that the devil tries to do, he can't do it. Because God said, I will rebuke the devourer. And when he says it, you know it's going to happen. 
Yesterday I shared Numbers 23, 19. God's not a man that he should lie. The son of man that he should change his mind or have to repent. He doesn't lie. He said, have I not spoken? Will I not do it? Has he not spoken? Will he not do it? Jeremiah said. Another place, of course he will. He, he brings something forth. Will he not complete it and finish it for you? He's doing it for me. Of course he is. And um, I think in Jeremiah 9, somewhere in that chapter, it says, the scripture says, that is not my word like a hammer that breaks the rock into pieces? Psalm 29 talks about the power of the voice of the Lord. It's so, it's so read that, it's so glorious. Job twenty two twenty eight 28 says, you, my son, my servant, my, my, my son, <laughs> more than servant, decree a thing and it will be established unto you. So be it in Jesus' name. So be it in Jesus Christ's mighty name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I receive every blessing God has for me today, this very hour, this very day right now. Lord, you're working behind the scenes. You're all over people. You're touching them. You're moving them. And you're sending, in the, uh, the next part of the prayer, you're sending your ministering spirits, your angels, to cause things to come into my hands now. You're working behind the scenes. You're working in everybody, everything that needs to be worked in for my benefit, that I get every treasure that's mine according to your plan, Lord. It is mine in my hands, coming into my hands right now in Jesus' name. This very day, this very hour, this very moment. So be it. No delays with anything. And the angels of God have been sent. Father, we've asked you, we've petitioned you. You said commanding the works, commanding the works of my hands, sent, you, you command me. And he said, the, the, the angels are there. They're, they're, they're servants for you. They're ministers of fire and power to make things happen for you. They're, they're ministers, servants to you, the heir of salvation. To the heirs of salvation, the angels are there, are there for us. So, Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name that the angels are working on our behalf right now and making everything happen for us today and every resource every cash property vehicles equipment people situations wealth treasures every single thing a commodity that's on the earth a source of wealth and treasure and money and resources and things that we need are coming to us are coming to us right now, coming into my hands right now. In Jesus' name, we will have all of them. And everything will go well. And then another level of prayer is we, we, we speak the favor of God to be upon every situation, that it succeeds. What do he say? Meditate in my word. Are we not doing that right now? Speaking his word. Speaking his word out. And he said, and then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have good success. Serve the Lord gladly. And then you'll spend your days and life in prosperity and pleasure. Job 36, 11 said, the blessing of the Lord makes rich, makes me rich, Proverbs 10, 22. And it comes with no sor sorrow or trouble added to it. It's just a blessing that blesses us. And that's it. Complete blessing. And we receive them all from you, Lord, right now in Jesus' name. And all the power of the Holy Ghost and all the power of all the angels are being released into every situation right now to make every good thing come to us right now. People that are in, that I'm speaking to, that are listening, you're in whatever business you're in, whatever career you're in, whatever God wants you to have, supernaturally, you're going to have it all. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Be blessed. This is so powerful. Pray along these lines every day, especially as we're fasting and praying unto the Lord. Just fasting without prayer is not enough. Sometimes prayer alone without fasting is not enough. You got to do both. Dive into it, my friends. Get into the realm of the glory. 
We need to be the glory carriers on the earth. And we need to be the blessing carriers, treasures of wealth. Oh, yes. I don't know. These people that talk religiously and get into these nonsense, nonsensical, nonsensical kind of defeatist thoughts regarding business and wealth and high living, I don't know what's wrong with them. Well, the devil tricked them somehow, but he can't do it to me, and he can't do it to you because you're hearing me. You're listening to my voice and following this voice in ministry, you're going to be blessed. You get you get your mind renewed, you know, you're getting imparted by these words that I speak all the time that are so powerful. Take them and forget it and, and, re, and reject everything else. Everything that's low level, everything that's non-productive and non-luxurious and non-upgrade and non-productive production and productivity in brilliance and in action, it's not for you. You have to, but you have to say that. You have to first think that, then you have to say it. Then you have to meditate on it. Then you have to pray over it. Then you have to get it in you, and you have to walk in it. And this is a realm of successful living that many have not attained or achieved to, uh, acclimated to yet. But it's time right now that we do. More than ever before, the day is at hand right now. The time is now. For us to be mightily, supernaturally blessed beyond what we, we even asked or thought according to Ephesians 3.20. And our dreams are coming true. God's dreams are coming true. What he wants for us is happening now. And no devil can hold it. No man can hold it. Father, you're raining fire down upon every situation to break every obstacle. It's another realm of prayer. Another level. There's about six or seven parts of this. And I'll make, we'll make it into a typed formula and put it in a book. Let's do that. The prayer, the whole prayer thing. Take it and then we edit that out as another paragraph, as a closing prayer in the book for victory and finances. And we can put it in all of my books on uh, financial excellence and success as a prayer formula on how to pray for these things, how to speak them out. That, and this works. I mean, let me tell you, this prayer is, is very powerful. Because it's scriptural. Because it's taking the correct authority, the position of authority, according to the mind of God. And, you know, he can't lose. So when you're in him, you can't. But when you're outside of him, you're, you're dancing around with all kinds of stuff on the earth that doesn't necessarily produce. And it's, it's, that's not right. We're supposed to walk in God's wisdom and brilliance. One thing I've done is I've shut off a lot of evil people, situations. I just am not accessible to them. And that's a good place to be. Imagine you're living a life every day, nobody bothers you. Because they can't, because you give them all, no access. That's another point of wisdom. So these prayer points, six or seven of them, however many there were, very powerful. So the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you. I speak as your prophet, pastor, leader, mentor. Let the Lord be glorified in your life, and I want to see you have results right now today as I'm having. In Jesus' name, as we fast and pray and consecrate ourselves unto the Lord further for this next week. And beyond, you may, you may hear this message a long time from now. Every day is a good day. Every day and every hour, no, no, no matter what day it is, it doesn't matter what day it is, every day and hour is a victory day if we appropriate it. And we're doing that right now through these prayers and declarations. In Jesus' name, I'm Thomas Manton IV. Follow the teachings online. The links are in the uh, descriptions there of this message. And share this with your friends. Share these messages with your beloved ones and partake of it and follow, follow the grace on this ministry. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you also for being my partner in ministry, how you become a partner as you sow financially into it. And the ways to do that are in the links and the headings of the titles of the messages. You'll see them there. And let God lead you. Do what the Holy Spirit tells you to do. Make a transaction with him. Do a business deal with him. 
by sowing, by tithing, by offering, by sowing seed. And watch tangible blessings come upon your life in greater ways than you've ever seen. And I declare it will be so in Jesus' name. Looking forward to hearing from you as you're doing that. The Lord bless you, keep you, and empower you with his glory and his touch in Jesus' name. To be blessed mightily, so be it in the matchless, majestic, marvelous, miraculous name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of the living God. I'm Thomas Manton of War. Talk to you later. Be blessed. Love you much.